Hi right, guys, welcome to uh, part three of my foam helmet build tutorial. Now, if you watched the first videos or whatever, you would have noticed that I did the entire ha uh, helmet in this um, duct tape form. Because I've made alterations to the actual helmet itself, none of the original cuts are gonna match up when I put on the back of the helmet. So what I now have done, I've gone back to the original way of doing it. Basically what we did in the first stage is cover it in tin foil and then cover it in uh, duct tape. So when I put the helmet back on, I know exactly where the seam's gonna be with the back of the helmet. So that's going on now. I'm gonna cut it out and draw lines and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Okay then, I've just uh, done the old masking tape thing and cut it out and that and uh, laying it out, it looks like a bit of a jellyfish. So it's gonna be emotional trying to cut it out. Hopefully it all works. I'll do that now. Okay, it's cut out. Um, it's looking like it's gonna work perfectly. Uh, the only thing is though, is when obviously these pieces are slightly thicker than the, uh, well, slightly thicker, they're a lot thicker than uh, the uh, duct, duct tape. So obviously when it closes in, it's gonna be slightly warped, okay? What I mean by that is that like, these pieces need to be cut at sort of like a 45 degree angle. So when they butt up and then glue it up, you get a perfect seam along the back of it. So what I'm going to do now is use my hot knife, my uh, soldering iron with a knife attachment to it, and I'm going to cut down the inside of every seam, every one of these, uh, at 45 degree angles. So when they all close up, the outside is going to remain the same, but the inside is going to have more of a surface area to be closing, so it's going to be nice and tight, tighter on the inside. And I also did some score lines along the top as well just to help manipulate the top because this is going to be actually up against the uh, back side of the helmet and I don't want any of these lines to warp because it's going to make it very difficult for the next stage for me to uh, marry up the two pieces. Let's get on with that. Okay then, uh, it's cut and it's been glued and I've checked it and it all fits. Um, I did have to add some additional bits to it though just to make it a little bit wider. But just piece it together and make it out. And then on this side, basically as I was cutting it at 45 degrees, it didn't account for it getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, and obviously there's a little bit of give with this being so thick when you come to cutting it out from a, a flat piece. As well, it's gonna shrink a little bit, so I have to add some more. So that's fine, though, it all fits on relatively where I need it to be. So that's pretty much it for that. And then I just gotta like uh, build it up a little bit more and uh, strengthen it, and that obviously with a little bit more uh, detail to tie it in with the front part of the helmet. So yeah, let's get on with that now. Okay then, I just uh, jumped ahead a little bit there, I just did some stuff without recording. Um, obviously stuff on the back, as you can see. Uh, and I've uh, cut it to where I roughly want it to sit on the back of my neck, on the back of my head. Uh, I put these in to uh, strengthen it up. Uh, and that's a really part of the design as well. So, so yeah, that's how the helmet's gonna sit roughly. Roughly gonna look. We're still going to build on the back, I'm going to sand some stuff down as well. So, yeah, so I'm planning to build up the back, have something that's going to overlap. If you can imagine that the helmet's in two halves, obviously, but on the back piece, the part's going to overlap onto the front piece like this, and then the same on the opposite side. So when they come on together, you're not going to see the seam, you're just going to see all the detail work along the tops, parts here, and the triangle, and then obviously the same for the side as well. Get 
trying to do something cool on there, possibly, maybe just to just overlock each other like that so you don't see any defining lines. So the lines that connect the front, uh, sorry, the back part to the front part are all over the place. So it sort of breaks it down so you can't really see what the helmet conjoins. Okay, the reason why I just had to uh, pull off the helmet and then re-glue it again uh, is because I want it to be as flush as possible with the helmet and I don't want to sand too much down which is going to uh, compromise the integrity of uh, the helmet. I'm going to overlap it and layer it up because it's going to get stronger but at the same time I don't want to be like wasting time uh, sanding stuff down when it's just a case of like two minutes just pulling it off and then re-gluing it back together so pulling it all nice and flat on the back of the helmet, uh, around the back of the mannequin head. Sorry. So now if you look at it, before these side bits here on the back were sticking out, so when you looked at it, they were out a little bit. Now I've just sort of glued them down and they're flush. So when I come to put the resin on it and the, um, uh, the Bondo and stuff, it's going to give it a little bit more strength. So when it pull it off, it's going to hold that shape and hopefully be nice and streamlined with uh, the rest of the helmet. That's the idea. We'll see if it works or not. Now I'm going to re glue the front back on just because I know where it's all going to sit now. It's all good. And that's all glued. So now, because I know it's all pulled tight uh, across the whole uh, mannequin head and any imperfections where it sticks out. I don't know if you can see that, where it sticks out there, where it's not completely flat. I know now that I can sand this down and I can overlap it. And when I overlap it, it's going to be nice and uniform both sides. Okay, whereas before this was sticking up a lot more because it wasn't completely flat to uh, the mannequin. Okay, so Sand it down all the uh, main uh, contours that I want to get rid of. Now I'm going to start building my back on the helmet. So I'm going to focus on this part here. Uh, the bottom's going to be attached to this back of the helmet, but it's going to overlap into the front, so I'm going to try and mask and hide this uh, seam. <clears throat> the next two pieces for the back of the helmet are going to be attached to the back, but it's going to overlap on the front to hide the seam. And it's basically just some two generic studies. I basically eyeballed it and then I trade, turn it over and I trace the other one again. So it's going to fit on the back like this, glue, and that's going to overlap the back of the helmet like this. So it's masking the line that's behind it. Okay, now as you can see, I've uh, fitted the pieces on. They're glued, they're not glued to the front of the helmet, and it's uh, trying to mask the uh, seam underneath. I, I, I just have to keep repeating that because uh, just so it sort of culminates in my head, okay? So that's that. Now then, I also want to hide this as well, so it sort of like over encloses. So I've uh, basically eyeballed uh, these two pieces, well. I've cut one and I've turned it over and then i traced it so they're both uh, the same. So what's going to happen is now is that I'm going to uh, come on this side I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to attach it to it and I'm going to glue it all the way around. Okay? So when the helmet gets enclosed, uh, the helmet is underneath the back of it and on top, if that makes any sense. So it sits into like a sort of a, a biscuit. And I'm also going to sand this down and then have it look a lot better than what it is. And then obviously the same on this side with this one. Ooh. The same on this side. This one, so then just, just like that. So it goes on like that. So now we're going to glue these on. I'm going to just manipulate it with my hand. So it's fine. So I've now finished sanding everything I need to on top of the helmet uh, so it can join and stuff. Um, I think I've just turned out a lot of work to do with uh, sanding down and stuff like that. But I'm happy 
the ones are on high speed, high lift. You can't, you can definitely see where the line is, but you can't see where it joins. So it's a definite line, so that will become part of uh, the detail work. Uh, but this is completely separate from this, so there's no parts attached, but you can't see the unfinished line apart from there. So that's that. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more sand on the back and then it's going to be ready for um, with a coat of resin. Yeah. I don't think there was too much in this uh, video on actually to watch. It was more self-explanatory. I mean, the methods are the same throughout. Uh, the whole helmet has now been sanded. Uh, eyes and where I want it to be. Um, <clears throat> just talk you through uh, the process that I'm thinking. I did want a lot of detail in the back, like a lot of hard um, edges to uh, use the Bondo on, but now I'm thinking I want a completely smooth back and I'm going to use the Bondo uh, to actually uh, put some detail work in some really nice fine lines and maybe a stencil or something like that. But yeah, so. That's going on, so obviously the whole helmet's like done now, like I ain't going to add anything more at this stage. The next stage now for me is to resin the entire helmet. And that's it guys, uh, thanks for watching, uh, hit subscribe, like and comment, all that good stuff. And the next video will be coming soon. Thanks guys, cheers.